Welcome to our Wednesday Bible study. Again, I'm broadcasting from uh, the desk in our bedroom. I hope you're having a great day, and I hope that on Thursday you will join us for the Christmas Eve service, however you can do that, whether you just want to watch it uh, live streamed or later on, uh, or if you want to come and be part of the service, you can be in the parking lot. It's just going to be Mary Hubert, Mike Norbaum, and myself in the church broadcasting a service. But we will have, you know, the parking lot available, FM radio, and uh, I will have a bulletin. So if you want to sing uh, the hymns in your car, you can do that. So anyway, let's uh, get started with a word of prayer today. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for another opportunity to get into your word and look again at the book of Psalms today, Psalm 141. Bless our time together. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> psalm 141 is a psalm of David. Let me read the verses and we'll go back and look at them a few verses at a time. David writes, I call to you, Lord, come quickly to me. Hear me when I call to you. May my prayer be set before you like incense. May the lifting up of my hands be like the evening sacrifice. Set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not let my heart be drawn to what is evil, so that I take part in wicked deeds along with those who are evil doers. Do not let me eat their delicacies. Let a righteous man strike me. That is a kindness. Let him rebuke me. That is oil on my head. My head will not refuse it, for my prayer will still be against the deeds of the wicked. Or excuse me, the deeds of evildoers. Their rulers will be thrown down from the cliffs, and the wicked will learn that my words were well spoken. They will say, as one plows and breaks up the earth, so our bones have been scattered at the mouth of the grave. But my eyes are fixed on you, Sovereign Lord. If in you I take refuge, do not give me over to death. Keep me safe from the traps set by evildoers, from the snares they have laid for me. Let the wicked fall into their own nets while I pass by in safety. Here ends the reading of God's word. Let's look at this a few verses at a time. A believer's cry, verses 1 through 4. I call to you, Lord, come quickly to me. Hear me when I call to you. When we understand how small we are and how great he is, more than anything, we desire for our prayers to be heard. When we understand that he alone is our rock and our fortress and our deliverer, we cry out because we know we need his help every moment of our lives. We know and understand that we were not created to go it alone. Verse 2, may my prayer be set before you like incense. May the uplifting of my hands be like the evening sacrifice. More than anything, we desire his attention. We desire that he would take notice of us. Like the burning of incense definitely gets our attention. And who can ignore someone who is lifting up their hands and waving them to get attention? The song, I Need Thee Every Hour, comes to my mind. We do need you every hour, Lord. We need you every moment. In reality, Lord, you are our life, and we long to spend every moment as close to you as possible. Verses 3 and 4. Set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over the doors of my lips. 
to not let my heart be drawn to what is evil so that I take part in wicked deeds along with those who are evil doers. Do not let me eat their delicacies. I think it's important for us to realize that we are weak and vulnerable. We are prone to say the wrong thing. We need someone to keep watch over our lips. We need someone to keep our hearts from being drawn and attracted to what is evil. And that's because if you're like me, I am not always able to discern what is good and what is evil. In my own strength, I am not always able to say no to those things that are not pleasing in your sight. I need your protection. I need you. Yes, I need you, Lord. Every hour, I need you, Lord, as David needed you. A believer's need for discipline and correction. Verse 5. Let a righteous man strike me. That is a kindness. Let him re rebuke me. That is oil in my head. My head will not refuse it, for my prayer will still be against the deeds of evildoers. When I read those verses, I thought of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. And that's what David is talking about here, training by means of discipline or correction that can even come from those who do not know the Lord. Like David, as believers, we need to long to be disciplined and corrected because we know that we are in training to be able by God's grace and God's power in every way, every day, because we are becoming more and more like the one who redeemed us and claimed us as his own. And that is an ongoing process of discipline and correction, even at the hands of unbelievers. Because we belong to the Lord and not the devil, because we belong to him every day, we are more and more coming to love what he loves and hate what he hates. And that is, a, that is the process of correction and discipline that we might become more and more like him. A believer's prayer for perseverance in the face of wickedness, verses six and seven. Their rulers will be thrown down from the cliffs and the wicked will learn that my words were well spoken. They will say, as one plows and breaks up the earth, so our bones have been scattered at the mouth of the grave. Previously, David declares that he is grateful for the Lord's discipline. But he also prays for God's righteous judgment to be executed on the deeds of evil doers. Because like David, we know that the wicked never give, never give us a second thought, never give a second thought to those who are hurt by their wicked ways. And one day 